to join um, the Big Ten Conference as its commissioner at this point in time, what is what, what was the what is the first thing uh, on your in in your inbox to do? What is what is the first order of business for you, Tony? Yeah, there's a lot actually. Like there's sort of like you know two or three things I point to. One is you know no particular order, but just you know USC and UCLA coming in. Right, we've got to do a great job there, integrate them in the conference. The conference has a really good history of doing that. Uh, you know, back in the day with Penn State and. Rutgers, Nebraska, Maryland as well. So it's just, number one, making sure that works. This is probably a little more challenging in terms of logistics and travel. So there's a lot of people in the office spending a lot of time on scheduling and trying to work through all those things. But we get those two great historic, you know, college athletics brands coming into the conference. So that's, that's great. So that's out there. You know, there's some, there's some work um, on the media side. Just, you know, we're in a really great position to have three broadcast partners. So when you think about what Saturdays are going to be, uh, on the football side for the Big Ten, it's going to be pretty, you know, pretty unique to have that kind of exposure. But, you know, with that, as you know, when you're balancing three partners, just the scheduling pieces. So, you know, completing that, making the schedules work for everybody, and you know, of course, member institutions. So that's out there. Um, there's a lot of work in the future of the college football playoff in the Big Ten going forward. You know, it's going to obviously expand. So that's out there doing, you know, doing that right. I think we have a huge opportunity around women's basketball and the success the conference had last year and just how the sport performed. You know, through the NCAA tournament, so there's some great, some great opportunities there. And then, you know, there's just all these big issues facing college athletics that are kind of out there, right? In terms of, you know, the governance and student athletes and all that. So you look at all those things. There's things that are just in the everyday uh, work at the conference, and there's some bigger issues that just take more time, more collaboration to to address. Big Ten Conference Commissioner Tony Petiti here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's take them one at a time. You mentioned incorporating USC and UCLA into uh, the conference. When do we find out? Um, obviously, you know, the SEC had this whole business about their schedule and how many conference games they're going to schedule, and they finally hammered that out. Uh, when do we find out when UCLA and USC get placed into a, into a division and what that, what that looks like in football, Tony? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I think we're just, honestly, just maybe just a few days away from sort of revealing like what it will look like going forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's been a lot about divisions, no divisions, there's been a lot of work. Obviously a lot of this work was done before I arrived in yes. terms of, you know, what the right path is. Um, you know, the conference is playing nine games. There's a commitment to, to continue to do that. I, you know, I think this, everything was studied, uh, but I think you'll see in really short order, uh, some information coming out about how we're going to play and how we're going to organize around you know, our college football schedule. And how so it's, who, it's days away. who's in who's been involved in those conversations? Are all the athletic directors, you know, given their two cents? And and then how does it all come out in the wash? Yeah, again, like looking back, because I obviously wasn't in the early phases of how that was done. But it's it, obviously it's it's across like the conference office making recommendations, the athletic directors giving your feedback. I'm you know I'm sure they talk to coaches obviously and get you know get their views on scheduling. But I think there's some. Some things that are, are important about nine in terms of strength of schedule, but also just how you play and how long it would take to rotate, right? You know, so there's certain things that, that I think are important that I think they, they 100% that the conference work here reinforces it, where you want, you know, you don't want to go too long where you know schools continue to miss each other in terms of how often they play. Um, I think you know, just by comparison, one of the great things that we changed uh, at MLB was this year. If you look at the schedule, Rich, like. Everybody plays everybody now. Yes. So, you know, if you're the Yankees, you're playing the Dodgers every year. You play them once at home, and then next year you go on the road potentially, however, however it alternates. But it just allows you to not have to wait that long as a fan to see those teams, especially when those teams have star players. I think it's exactly the same sort of idea here. One, it's easier to have, you know, competitive balance. You're playing more frequently. Um, so I think those are some of the really important tenets you'll see when we announce what the format is. I think those things were incredibly important and, and were – I think handled the right way to make sure that you know members aren't missing each other for too many years. So this way, it'll feel more cohesive as a conference. This way, but there, there's some you know rivalries that can't be broken up, right? Correct. Or that you have to play Correct. every yeah, year. That's right. Do you have that's a list right. of those? Is there a list, uh, Tony? We do. You'll see. You'll see pretty soon. You can guess on some of them, right? Some oh, of them yeah. Are really obvious. So yeah, those are going to be protected. You have to in terms of you know what that is, and if you can get to a format where. You know, you're protecting those core rivalries, and at the same time, you're creating a rotation that has you know members playing each other frequently, so you can provide that you know that same type of of connection. I think is really important, but obviously there are just certain things that you absolutely have to protect.
Right, I know that. And then um, how about game times as well? There, there is some serious tradition in the Big Ten on that front, and you got three partners, Fox, CBS, and NBC, that I'm sure – are all jockeying for that position, and you're in that you, you you know how to work this one. I mean, you've been involved on the other side, uh, right, <laughs> for so many times in your career. Was, yeah, right? this is how I was trained, actually. This is the first thing I did was really college football and college basketball scheduling for ABC. Um, look, I think one thing to, to be – you probably would feel this way also. I think to credit to Fox because what they did in creating this new window – I think was a little bit of non-traditional thinking, right, of putting big games at noon. That's worked extremely well, right? So that's just been a great decision on Fox's part and give those guys credit for, you know, taking the chance to do that. And then obviously they had the research and the data and they, and they were right. And then, you know, 3.30 to think about what we did at CBS when I was there to really anchor the SEC at 3.30 for all those years. That's been a great, you know, window to have that. And so – and then, you know, you look at uh, the opportunity in prime. So I think where we have this great opportunity is to have that consistency through the day, right? Having, uh, you know, in today's world especially, being able to, you know, to own noon and 3.30 in prime time across, right? It'll be a little bit of a bridge because this year CBS still has the SEC before they transition to, to pretty much just Big Ten. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be really, really great. Now, your point is right. It does create, you know, some scheduling challenges, right? Everybody's looking for the same – the you know, same games and how you dole that out. There's a whole selection process that has to be, you know, ironed out. We started on it this year. It'll continue to evolve. But I think the good thing is with, you know, USC and UCLA coming in, there's just plenty of great games here. Um, and so, we, you know, we'll have no problem getting through the day. There's some things that, you know, about when certain schools play, what time of year, at night, all those things are things that you're pointing out that are just, you know, traditions in the Big Ten that we have to, you know, respect and then work with. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.